<laughs> Coffee harvest season has begun in South Sudan. These farmers near the border with the Democratic Republic of Congo are the first generation of South Sudanese coffee exporters. Until now, they produced coffee for the local market. Many welcome the opportunity to sell abroad. It's much better to harvest the coffee for export. Here we just take it to the wet mill and get our receipt, that's it. It's much easier than drying the coffee on your own and then having to look for buyers here in South Sudan. South Sudan is the world's youngest nation, but it has already been torn apart by nearly two years of conflict in the north. Central Equatoria State, located in the south and known to be the country's agricultural heartland, has remained relatively peaceful. The company investing in the region is no other than coffee giant Nespresso, a subsidiary of Nestlé, the world's largest food corporation. The firm was drawn by the unique taste of South Sudan's coffee beans. Nespresso is working with an NGO to set up this cooperative and provide much-needed infrastructure, including this wet mill. Nespresso is marketing coffee production in South Sudan as a unique opportunity for job creation and sustainable development. But although farmers welcome the extra cash, the two euros they currently earn per kilogram of exported coffee are not enough to buy food for their families. I'm busy harvesting the coffee, but then I also have to go and take care of my subsistence farm to grow food for my family. Because of the rising cost of food in the market, I can only afford to buy essential items like cooking oil and salt. Focusing more on cash crops such as coffee means that farmers spend less time and resources on growing food to feed themselves and the nation as a whole. Over 90% of South Sudan's land is said to be fertile. But most of the food consumed in South Sudan is imported at high cost, leaving the population at the mercy of exchange rate fluctuations. Around 35% of the population are severely food insecure, and many rely on food aid. Even here in the state of central Equatoria, one of the most fertile patches of land in South Sudan, farmers lack sufficient machinery and labor. It means they cannot produce enough food for the local population and growing influx of people fleeing conflict areas. The major problem is that we have enough land, but we have no access to tractors. If we could hire a tractor, we could easily work twice as much land. The Ye Agricultural Training Center, a Norwegian-funded local NGO, is trying to increase agricultural productivity by teaching farmers new techniques. What kind of seedlings do you have currently? For the center's principle, coffee farming is an unnecessary distraction. The priority of the private sector is first of all to fulfill the needs of the local demand. Then that means that the next step is now to go for cash crops that can be imported to the outside countries or internationally. Like, for example, crops like coffee, crops like tobacco, but otherwise the priority is enough food to meet the local population. But with the onset of the conflict, private investments have dried up. NGOs are focused on humanitarian rather than development projects. And the government is busy financing the war rather than building critical infrastructure such as roads. Still, the Minister of Agriculture promises that with the recent signing of a peace deal, the government will spend more on agriculture. We shall give them oxflowers, we shall give them tractors, we shall give them walking tractors so they can produce their food where they are. And then we open the feeder roads to the markets. Just how much budget has been allocated to these activities remains unclear. Despite repeated questions, the minister avoided providing details. How much budget has the government allocated for feeder roads? Uh, this is this what is in, in, in the plan. 
did in plan, did in budget, and also development partners are working in Sri Lanka well food program, and other organizations who are working with us in food security. The minister expects investors to start pouring in. Yet for now, Nespresso's 2.2 million euro investment in coffee farms is the exception rather than rule. To attract more investors that can unleash the agricultural potential and stop hunger, South Sudan needs better policies. And above all, it needs lasting peace.